we'll get this one going. Valerio Mascarello. Thanks, guys. Sorry it's taking a little longer than usual. I've always wanted to get these things started at 6 o'clock. It never happens, but at least you guys are all here. I really, really, really appreciate it. Jay appreciates it. All the fans that came here from, man, overseas, Montreal, uh, Edmonton. You guys, you guys are amazing, man. Jay really, really appreciates it. Anyways, I want to get the guy out here. Let's get this thing started. And uh, I know you guys are waiting anxious and stuff, so uh, let's get Jay out here. I did have probably the best preparation I ever had training for a contest. 
You know, now being 37, I just turned 37 before the contest. It's uh, happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. I find myself starting to lie about my age. I'm like, I'm 36. You know? I was like, no, you're 37 now. But um, I felt great, you know, and that's the amazing thing about bodybuilding. You know, I started training at 18 years old, and now training like 19 years, it's like I figured by this time my body would be tired, and you know, I wouldn't be as enthusiastic about you know training for competition. But it honestly was a great preparation for me. You know, I felt good going into the contest. I felt very confident after the last year's uh, victory. And uh, I just wanted to be better than ever and come back. And I, I wanted to win convincingly, which I don't think I really did. Um, I think, you know, I didn't win by straight first all the way around. I think the second day I won by straight first, but thank you. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't accomplish what I wanted to. And sometimes even as a top professional world, your goals aren't necessarily met. So now sitting back after the contest and, and you know, kind of reviewing things a little bit. I haven't got to see a lot of the photos because I was so busy with photo shoots. I shot 12-hour days after the show and then literally got on a plane and came up here to do promotions for this event. And I'm sitting in front of you today one week from the, from the victory Saturday night. Um, okay, okay. I'm going for number five next year. because I'm working on some film projects and you know I've always said you know I was Hercules. Yeah, Hercules. <laughs> and the monitor Hercules. I got the hair now. So. <laughs> you wear leather underwear? What's that? Yeah. Leather underwear? No, no, I'm, I'm a monitor. Our days weren't regular underwear. We wear the you know, boxer type briefs. So. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So, so now I'm hungry for number five, and I feel great about that because I wasn't sure actually going into number four how I would feel about five. And everyone kept saying, you know, you're going to go for record, you're going to go for six, seven. And I said, well, I'm going to get to four before I get to five. So now I'm at four, and five sounds pretty good. So I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, getting back in the gym. I actually had a pretty solid workout today for the first time I was able to train. And, uh, you know, I'll get start easing my way back in definitely by the first year. I have a very hectic travel schedule and you know, Mr. Olympia brings a lot of demands, um, things you never dreamed about. I've traveled every every place in the world, I've seen every culture, I've met every person, I've met poor countries, uh, very rich countries, um, I've met so many people that were my fans that became my friends and I've had so much support and this support shows I mean, you guys came to see one guy, one guy, Jay Cutler, and you don't know what that makes me feel like. I really, I really don't think there's, there's anyone that's uh, competitive against me that appreciates the fans more than me. I try to reach out to all my fans, and I've had so many for so many years that, and new ones. Um, it's. It's just, this is why I do what I do. I mean, I just want to be the best at what I do, but be the best at what I do, but I want to have the fan following. I want to just, I want to make everyone happy. Um, I think about all you guys when I train for these competitions. I know everyone's going to be there at the Olympia chair in my name, and now sitting here in front of all you guys here. Um, it, it's just, you never dreamed about this when I was a kid. I mean, I picked up a magazine at 12 years old, and I saw a picture of Chris Dickerson, who was Mr. Olympia back then. And I said, that's what I want to look like. And my brother said, well, that's crazy. <laughs> I can't believe you want to look like that. The guy has muscles in his feet, you know? Oops. And uh, I actually, you know, read through the books when I was a teenager. And I was a football player in high school. I was a pretty muscular kid. I worked on my family farm. And I developed a physique that, that no one else had. I was always the strongest kid in high school. And uh, everyone used to go in the gym with me, in the high school gym, and say, come on, Jay, we just want to see a bench press. And I remember, you know, bench pressing 315 pounds when no one else could. And uh, that was like, I was like the spectacle of school when I was the only one that could do that. So um, I really didn't lift weights, so I just did 
You know, I just went in there and just bench pressed, basically. But I actually joined the gym my 18th birthday with the, with the journey to be a bodybuilder. I wanted to become a competitive bodybuilder, and I competed six months after that, joining the gym at 18. And I got second in my first competition. I was hooked from there. You know, I became a teenage national champion at 19 and earned professional status on my third competition, um, the nationals in the United States at 23. And slowly worked my way up. And of course, you know, won three Arnold Classics. I was second at the Olympia five times. Now I won the four Miss Olympia titles and numerous other titles. It's it's only something you really dream about. And what I really try to spread the word of is. You know, in the beginning I set realistic goals, but what I realized is, along with all those goals, there were gonna be obstacles that you overcome. And there were a lot of setbacks as well as positives. So we have to learn how to deal with those things. And having a great support system around you is something that is necessary. I had to stay very, very grounded. When I was 21 years old, when most people turn the legal drinking age, everyone wants to party. I never did any of that stuff. I always was in the house training eat my six or seven meals a day and staying really focused on what the future would be because I hope that eventually I would be doing what I want to do and make a living at professional bodybuilding traveling and, and being, you know, one of the best elite bodybuilders and then of course the dreams came true and I would give it all to that sacrifice that I gave early on. I was very, very uh, grounded and, and very, very focused and determined. I had the aspirations to be the best someday, and, and why everyone said to me, and, and this was every single time I won a show, someone told me that I couldn't go to the next step. And there's always that negativity around you, and that's something with bodybuilding that you're gonna get all the time. And my family really didn't understand what, what I did. I come from a large family. I'm the youngest of seven children. I have three brothers, three sisters, and I am the biggest. Of that. <laughs> and they had no clue what I was doing. My dad, my dad's 81 right now, and he still doesn't understand it. He's just like, you know, you're crazy. You know, it's, it's uh, he sees what I go through, and they don't understand how I can stay on that kind of diet. You know, I eat you know, five, six pounds of meat or fish a day, and I eat you know seven to ten meals a day. And, it's just total, total discipline still. And they are supportive at this point where they come to the shows and support it, but they still have no clue. My dad doesn't know what a protein or a carbohydrate is. And he back. <laughs> you know, I said to him one time, because he wants to try to lose a little weight in his stomach. And I said, Dad, you know, you've got to separate your protein and carbohydrates and obviously cut your fats. And he kind of knew what fats were, but he said, well, what's a protein? I don't know what that is. I mean, and it's very difficult. We all laugh about that because we're all um, somewhat involved in this. But a lot of people don't know. They don't know how to eat. And I really give you know 80% of what I do to my diet, to the nutrition, the consistency. And a lot of people look at me and they say, well, how can I get as big as you? Well, I've been training for 19 years, but the consistency of year in, year out of that diet, I never fell off a diet. That's one thing I never did is, is even when I wasn't training, because I took time off from after weight training. I still stayed on a specific diet. I never ventured out and ate crazy foods. Um, I always talk about it you know, more in the United States, but I've never had like Taco Bell or Kentucky Fried Chicken. I've never tried any of that stuff. I've always eaten on a pretty clean diet. I mean, once in a while, if I have anything, I'll have like a burger and fries. There's this place called In-N-Out Burger that's in Las Vegas. Any guys been to In-N-Out Burger? It's, it's pretty, pretty good. <laughs> I had it after the show this year, let's put it that way. And uh, that's pretty much the you know, really only thing I splurge on, but that's very rare that I actually do that. I still eat pretty uh, particular. And, um, you know, my diet, I'm a big red meat eater. I might eat red meat two or three times a day, even on a contest diet. But mainly for contests now, I eat a lot of fish, which I can't stand at all. So. I eat one pound of fish every single meal um, of tilapia, and I cook it outside of the foreman grill because it stinks so bad. <laughs> Who here eats fish? Any guys eat fish? How bad do you hate it? I love, I love it. it. I love it. 
I should usually have my job. Right? <laughs> I guess you got the neighbor loving you, I guess. So, so, so a lot of times when I eat my fish, it's like this, you guys. Yeah, really. <laughs> I have to hold my nose. I just wish for it to be gone. So really, I only eat for, for, uh, for function. I don't eat really for taste, because if I ate for taste, I'd eat McDonald's yeah. or Burger King every meal, pretty much. Um, but for me, I mean, I just do what I have to do, and that's the difference between me and a lot of the other guys, is I'll always do the sacrifices it takes. And you know, I died for 14 weeks of competition. This year's Olympia, you know, I, I did my cardio twice a day, stair mill at home usually, um, for 40 minutes each time. And then I ate seven meals a day. And the different thing about me with a lot of guys is I only sleep in short sleeping patterns. So, for me, I get up at eight in the morning, I usually do my cardio session, and then I, I eat about three meals, and I train at about five in the afternoon. Um, then I eat, come home and eat like three more meals. And I do my last cardio session at two or three in the morning, and by, I go to bed about four, and then I'm up again. My longest sleep pattern is four hours. And a lot of people say, well, how can that be? But it seems like my body's just adjusted to that routine. And I really, I actually like doing the cardio in the middle of the night. And fortunately for me, I have uh, all my cardiovascular at home to a treadmill bike, elliptical stair mills. So I do the stairs at home in my garage, living in Las Vegas. It's about 140 degrees in my garage. So I just walk out there and I'm already soaking wet with the sweat. So it's easy to get into shape pretty quick. And um, I do my cardio there. And uh, off season, like right now, I'll start doing actually and um, I do my cardio there. And uh, off season, like right now, I'll start doing actually, I'll stay with that cardio routine because my goal now is to actually not, like some bodybuilders get bigger. I'll actually try to slim down now and drop my weight to about 270 pounds. I competed about 263 at the Mr. Olympia. I weigh about 280 today. And I'm gonna actually start cutting my weight down um, and lean out until I start full-on training in January. So how I'll do that is I'll just stay with more cardiovascular. My workouts will just be quick pump-up workouts, just enough to maintain muscle so I can continue with my guest posings. But I'll keep a pretty clean diet and probably start cutting the calories down. Whereas most days I eat you know, between five to 7,000 calories a day. I'll keep it down in the 5,000 range. Five and that's even on a contest that I eat a lot of calories, get ready for the show. Um, I eat about between 500 to 600 grams of protein a day, and then I have somewhere between 400 to 500 carbohydrates a day. So my low day on carbohydrates on a contest diet is 400 carbs a day to maintain my weight, because I, I weighed about, about two, I weighed about 275 to 278 before the last week when I cut my water. So for me to be pretty much in contest shape, I, I'm just under 280 pounds before I deplete my water and I lose about 12, 12 to 15 pounds of water in the last three or four days. And I think that's this year where something went a little backwards because I got very dehydrated on Friday. And a lot of you guys may have read online, um, I got to the point where I was almost so fatigued that I almost couldn't make it through the prejudging. And I couldn't understand why. It's the only time that's ever happened to me. So when I got off stage on Friday night, I could barely move. I barely had the energy to get to my car. When I got home, I laid down. I had a drink and drink and drink, which you know everyone knows when you're in a contest mode and trying to peak for a competition, you can't necessarily drink. But I had to um, in fear of that my body was going to shut out and, you know, I was in heavy dehydration, so I wanted to avoid that, and I drank, and then when I woke up Saturday morning with a two-day competition, I was pretty watered out, so I had to do everything I could to rid myself of the water on Saturday, which included, I was working out, I was actually working out in the gym, you know, who watched the, the show online? Any you guys watching that? So when did it start, seven o'clock? Uh, what time did it start here? Uh, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, so that's 7 West Coast time. I was in the gym working out at 6 o'clock uh, before that night show on Saturday night. I was actually working out. 
to try to make sure to peak my body for that evening show. So by the time you saw me on stage, you know, within the next hour or so, I think I opened the show with, they brought all the Olympians out first, right? All the former Olympians. It's at the start of the contest. So I had just been done working out and rushing over to the show and peaking my body for that night show. And it worked perfectly because, you know, by Saturday it was a lot better than Friday. And I was uh, a little fuller and, and actually, uh, you know, pretty on point enough to win with straight first on Saturday night. So, you know, you pretty much do what it has, you have to do. And, you know, I never planned on doing that, but that's, that's what I was up against. So to give you guys a little insight, you know, I mean, it's pretty amazing. I never planned on working out, you know, before the show that, that, that late. And uh, I was able to come through with the win. So I was ecstatic. And, um, you know, like I said, I'm just looking forward to next year doing battle a little bit. So. Who has a question for me? As a Open it up. This is questions, guys. If you got a question, we'll bring the mic over to you. You can stand up. You, sir. Hey, Jay, how are you doing? Congratulations. Uh, quick question. When uh, you and Phil were on stage, the final two. What were we saying to each other? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and one question after. Uh, uh, what your website there, the virtual training, what's that going to be like? Okay. Um, so. A lot, of, a lot of you guys know the history with Phil Heath and I. I. I found Phil Heath at a local bodybuilding show in Colorado. I was guest posing. I saw this guy back there with these crazy arms back in, this was 2005. Uh, was it 45? I think 2005 I found Phil Heath at a show and I walked over to him and I said, uh, I said, you know, what, what are you doing? Are you competing? He said, well, I was thinking about doing the Junior Nationals and, and, the, Nat and the USA, which is two shows in, in the United States, and the USA is you actually learn, earn professional status. And I said, well, you could win those shows very easily right now. He says, do you think so? And I said, absolutely. So I said, you know, what's the problem? He said, well, I have no money. I can't, I can't uh, pay to, to travel and do all that for the show. So I said, all right, listen, give me your number. I'll, uh, I'm gonna talk to some people and see what I can do for you. This was on a Saturday show. By Monday, I had him a leader contract already. They, I, I sent pictures of Phil Heath over to Peter McGuff at Weeder Publications, and they signed him to a contract right there, and that was the beginning of Phil Heath. And we became the best of friends after that. We spoke often, and he came out and trained with me. I punished him several, several times, <laughs> which I still do. He still can't train with me. And our dream was to be able to stand one, two at the Mr. Olympia someday. And I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to hang on to wait for him until he got there. But I waited, and he brought it because he's an unbelievable bodybuilder now. He is the next dominant champion. I'm absolutely sure of it. He's just, he's just so focused, determined. He has the mental capacity now to be the number one bodybuilder in the world. And this kid's going to push everyone, including myself, if I come back next year, to be Mr. Olympia. So we were actually having a conversation on stage um, saying, you know, do you remember when we talked about this, you know, us being one, two, and, and, uh, you know, we never thought it'd be possible, and here we are standing here, and I said, you know, no matter how this goes down, you know, you know I love you, like a brother, and it's not gonna change anything, win or lose, and our friendship's always gonna be the best, I'm always gonna support him. When I retire from bodybuilding, I will specifically go to Mr. Whippy to watch Phil E, because he's that close to me. You know, I love the guy. So, um, we were reminiscing, and um, a lot of nervousness between the two of us, but I was pretty sure that I won, so. <laughs> so. <laughs> Julie, you're, you're Hold on, no. yeah. one more question here. Yeah. Yeah, another part of so right now, of many projects I'm working, the lights are out in the audience, you know that? <laughs> put the spotlight on here. 
Yeah. Take the shut those light talk with the spotlight on me. Exactly. Okay. Don't worry, I got my pants on still. Don't worry. <laughs> You are going to take your pants off though at some point. Um, like it or not. So the bodybuilding, Jay Cutler's bodybuilding VT is the newest project that I'm working on with one of many projects. And what this is is an online training system. I actually shot all the training already, um, showing all the different exercises, every single exercise I've ever used. And I'm putting it together um, to talk you know, on a green screen. I actually shoot all that stuff in the next, we're supposed to launch on November 1st in this project on, it's uh, you know, Bodybuilding VT is the name of the website. You'll be able to actually have workouts um, on a membership fee every month, designed every specifically for you, and it's gonna vary every single time. Every single workout's gonna be different, it puts together, you just punch in. Um, I become your own personal trainer basically online. So I have many projects, and what this is is an online training system. I actually shot all the training already, I'm showing all the different exercises, every single exercise I've ever used, and I'm putting it together um, to talk you know, on a green screen. I actually shoot all that stuff in the next. We're supposed to launch on November 1st in this project. Um, it's uh, you know, Bodybuilding VT is the name of the website. You'll be able to actually have workouts um, on a membership fee every month, designed every specifically for you, and it's gonna vary every single time. Every single workout's gonna be different. It puts together, you just punch in, um, I become your own personal trainer basically online. So I design all your programs. Um, I do nutrition, I do everything. So um, for, I think the membership fees, uh, we haven't really said that the membership fee is around $14. And then you'll have inside videos of my lifestyle, kind of stuff you see on the YouTube where they follow me around, all my training videos that you buy, they purchase, that will all be available through that company also. It's a company based in Vegas. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a, a really nice way to tap out to, to more of a market, broad audience, and uh, show more a little bit in depth of what I do. So that should be launched. Uh, we, we, we're aiming for November 1st, but um, hopefully by the end of the year for sure. Okay? So both you and Phil are training with the guidance of Hanny Rambach. How does that work with him training both of you guys? Do you give me the same advice, or do you guys share secrets, or how does that work? Um, yeah, we, we work under the same uh, nutritionist, uh, Hani Rambod, and we don't share secrets, um, but there is no secrets, really. I mean, Phil has his way, I have mine. And the unique thing about Hani is, like, he doesn't tell me all Phil's doing this, or Phil looks like this. And I'm sure he doesn't tell Phil what Jay looks like this. I mean, <laughs> Phil knows how I look, and I know how Phil looks because we talk on the phone every day and we send each, each other pictures pretty much all the time. Like, look at me, man, look at this, look at this front double bicep, you know? Say, <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, Phil, I'm going to Dairy Queen, what, what do you think? Well, it, it's pretty amazing. This guy can eat anything he wants, he still gets ripped. That's kind of pissing me off. <laughs> went on and some sushi, man, and I'm like, well, I'm sitting at home eating my fish and avocado. You know? <laughs> He's like, I'm on one cardio session. I'm like, I'm on two, man. I'm dying over here. You know? <laughs> so he's, uh, you know, we just correspond back and forth. And, you know, I, I'm not, it's all who works the hardest and who has the best genetics. And, I mean, I still feel like because of my muscle maturity, I'm, you know, he's 30, I'm 37. Um, I always felt, you know, I had an edge because my muscle was a lot denser and my width and, you know, it's, it's really subjective on how they really judge and a lot of people think Phil he should have won, people think Dexter Jackson should have won, uh, Branch Warren, but I know my strength is being my width and my size, um, my conditioning when I'm on point and I know that I can't be beaten with the line of competitors that I have against, I really feel that way. I mean, I. I just feel that when I'm at my best, I, I can pretty much, um, you know, walk through that contest. So I was abs absolutely sure going into the show that I was a favorite to win, even though there was a lot of controversy of it being a weeder contest and now it's time with muscular development. You heard all the theories, you know. I, anytime I ever win, you guys see, I mean, I'm the most doubted bodybuilder out there. It's, it's unbelievable. I get disrespected all the time. Everyone wonders if I have enough focus. They just think I'm up, I'm just like hanging out. I don't know what they think. Like, it's just like I'm not doing anything, but I'm at home training. 
and I'm just doing my thing and kind of laughing at this stuff. And you know, now as I go, yeah. What'd you say? Jealous. Exactly. It's uh, as I train for number five, you guys watch the negative comments by all the jealous people saying, well, Jay's not going to be able to do it. He doesn't have this anymore, doesn't have that. But when I wind up in 2011 and I'm standing there on stage and you guys are there or you're watching the, the webcast and it comes down to me and whoever, because it's always me and whoever. I mean, it's always been the past 10 years, me and whoever in the top two. So I'm really not uh, concerned about what people think or what, you know, I'm just concerned about the positive things. And you guys are my positive things. You guys are here to see me. Now you touched on it a little bit earlier, your, your movie deal. Tell us about that. When can we expect to see it? And, and how the heck are you going to get ready for a show filming a movie? I was supposed to start filming soon. I was actually supposed to start filming in October. This is the Hercules Now film, which is actually based on the modern day Hercules uh, character, which I'm playing John Hercules, where I'm a steel worker during the day and I'm a bouncer at night. Do <laughs> <laughs> you still get that? People come to you and say, are you, are you a bouncer? Are you a doorman? Are you a wrestler? Well, you know, I'm, I'm big. You know, you know, big guys used to be bouncers at one time. I was never a bouncer, but, you know. I noticed the bouncers always with those big tough guys, you know. It's, it's, it's probably bouncers sitting in this audience. <laughs> you're, you're a bouncer. Pissed off 12 bouncers right here. Uh, you know, so I'm actually playing um, on a modern day. So the film's supposed to actually film in Detroit. And I'm actually in the movie more of an action guy where I'm more fight scenes. So, I'm working in this club at night, and I, I kind of the father figure of this young girl that's in my neighborhood. Her mom's um, um, a drug addict, and of course I'm kind of her, her person that watches over her. Well, she sneaks into the club one night, and she gets, I get to, you know, try to break up the fight. I see her, and the fight breaks out, and next thing you know, she disappears. Well, come to find out there's this Russian mob that's been kidnapping the girls for prostitution and drugs. and. I'm now on this quest to find this girl. And as the Hercules tale is, he fights the nine-headed serpent in the tale of Hercules. Um, and I'm actually uh, gonna fight like nine guys to get to the main guy to find this girl. And all of them have different tasks that I have to go through to find these, these henchmen and, and try to you know, get to this girl. And you know, they basically beating people up and, I have this special strength, being Hercules, that I don't really know about. I'm this real humble guy that's kind of laid back personality, which is an exact role this script was written specifically for me. And so this movie is just basically a lot of action, and I try to find this girl, but there's a special twist towards the end, which I can't really give out. And, uh, you know, that's, that's my, my, basically my movie, and I'm looking forward to doing it. I signed for five pictures. Actually, um, this is the first, and um, I hope to launch into some sort of uh, film career now. But as far as training, this is supposed to take somewhat soon, so of course it's not going to cut into Mr. Libya. We was actually supposed to shoot in April, but it actually got set back, which was fortunate for me, because I would have had to finish and then go right into my Olympia preparation. And uh, that's another reason why I'm probably going to lean down a little bit, just in case we're ready to go. I don't want to look uh, too monstrous on film. Yeah, no fear. I sent it to Vegas because I was at the two locations all year. And um, it came to show preparation. I'm like, okay, I need filet, you know, because the, the, the beef had to be lean. So they're like, oh man, you know, this filet is really expensive. So we went all year, they sent me all this meat, and then they got real cheap as if Mr. Olympia came, and they didn't want to send me my filet. So I had to go to Costco. I want to see my Costco trips. I go to Costco and buy all my, all my meat. And, um, you know, so I, I actually ended up spending back a lot of money again where I thought I was getting everything for free. But fortunately for me, I could write it all off. So you guys that are bodyguards, you know, you got to find yourself a way to make yourself a business. That way you can write the stuff off. <laughs> I carry myself as a business. I started a, my 
my enterprise when I was like 22 years old when I started making money and valuable and so I could actually write stuff off, my cars, my gas, my clothing. Um, but that's the main thing I spend my money on, so you want to talk about money. And, uh, you have cars? Yeah, I have cars. <laughs> How many? Um, I mean, I don't know. I think I have five cars now. So you got, you got a Honda Civic, you yeah. got a, a Subaru Legacy. What else do you have? <laughs> Super. Well, I won, you know, I won three Hummers at the Arnold Classic. Um, every year, my neighbors used to complain about that. They're like, why do you got so many damn Hummers sitting in the driveway? <laughs> The damn things didn't fit in my garage. <laughs> Finally moved in a house with a five-car garage, but now my garage is all clothing for the clothing line and all at gym. So I don't even have enough space in my cars now. And uh, you know, it's, you can never have enough space, I guess. I moved into a bigger house, and you know, the clothing line started taking off. So how big is the house? It's like uh, six thousand feet. You guys see my house in my videos, right? So now I have four standout trophies. That's all I care about is four standout trophies in my office now. Four gold medals. I don't really care about the five silvers anymore. <laughs> I was just praying this year, please, no more silvers. I don't want any more silver medals. What's the next question? Question over here. Hi, Terry. Hi. Um, I have a question about um, in pay between women and men in Why is it the pay that you get is so much higher than women? I think it's the draw of the audience. Like a lot of, a lot of um, you know, guys or women want to, not, women, not really women, I mean, more guys want to see more muscular guys, it seems like, and that's where the ticket sales are the highest. Um, I think women's bodybuilding, I mean, it doesn't get publicized at all in the magazines anymore. So you have no vision of what really goes on. If you pick up a bodybuilding magazine and you look at ads, which everyone knows is like most of bodybuilding magazines nowadays, um, and features, they rarely feature any women bodybuilders. And how are you going to sell tickets to a bodybuilding show or get draw of women that want to follow women's bodybuilding or get women to guest pose? do these kind of events when they're not publicized. If you're not seen, you're not heard, you're not going to get recognized. I think that's the main thing. Would you agree? It makes sense, but I was about, she has seven degrees. Um, and she's huge. I just think, I think that she would have to go on the hustle a little more to try to get that publicity. I think maybe, um, well, I can't really say that because um, I don't really know. She, oh, she, oh, she trains as hard. Yeah, of course, she trains as hard, but there's no one that markets himself like me. I believe I'm the ultimate bodybuilding marker. It's hard to say. I, mean, I just think it's because the magazines won't cover it. That's comes that's come down. If you didn't see Jay Cutler in every single magazine, yeah. you know, would he be as popular? I'm signed with the with the most publicized supplement company in the world. Um, that's half the reason why I'm so recognizable. People say Jay Cutler muscle tech. You know, I've been one of the fortunate athletes. Um, I'm blessed every day. And um, you know, I, I just I, like I said, I would just, uh, I would say it's because of that. Let's get a few more questions for Jay going. We're going to have a little intermission coming up as well. Music? Go back to her uh, question over there. I, I've worked at magazines for 10 years, and it's not really, it's basically the fan base. That's what it's all about, is uh, women's violating would be bigger if it was a bigger fan base. And with a bigger fan base, they get paid more money. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Any questions back here? Just stand up, sir. Just holler at Thank you so much.
just you, sir. You're not the only one. <laughs> the rest of those fellows are sleeping. Red meat maximum once a day, 